These days, just about anything can be tattooed, from hyper-realistic tattoo designs to your favorite movie characters, or even your favorite anime characters. In today's video, guys, we are going to be drawing an all-time fan favorite. We are drawing Naruto. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Daggett, this is Daggett Designs. Right here on my channel, I teach you guys how to draw all sorts of illustrations every week. So if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and smash that like button if you've been here before and you know you're gonna love today's video. That having been said, let's jump straight into it by going to the overhead. Okay, welcome back to the table, everyone. So today, like I said, we're looking at drawing Naruto. I have a piece of sketch paper here, a pencil to sketch my design out, an eraser and a sharpener to keep a fine point on my pencil. In addition to this, I have a circles tool. So this is basically a little piece of plastic shaped like a circle with a whole bunch of smaller circles inside of it. And I will be using this a couple of times in this illustration. If you don't have one of these, you could go ahead and take any circular object like a roll of tape or maybe a glass or something like that and use that to trace out your shapes. Just get creative with it and find whatever circular items you may have. Right, so to start this one off, we are going to use our circles template and we're going to trace a circle out. Now you could freehand this, uh, however, I find it a little bit better to trace this out from an actual circle shape. This is just going to give you a more accurate line basically, uh, but you could go ahead and freehand this and sometimes I will if I'm just doing a rough sketch, but you want this to be nice and precise, especially because this is going to be a tattoo design. Now I've done it slightly to the right hand side of the page because there are some details that come off to the left. You might need to play around with this and see what works for you. From here we're going to add in a side plane to the head just by cutting off the side portion of the head using an oval. Like this and if you've watched any of my videos uh, on drawing faces or heads you'll see that this is a common method that I use. Like this. And you can chop off that other side slightly if you would like as well. And now I'm going to bring a center line around and down like this. So that's going to come around the front side of the head and down the face. Uh, from here, I like to rotate my page and just come down a little bit from there and drop in a flat shape like this, which is going to be roughly where our chin sits. That can curve up towards our oval here. And as it comes back to the oval, it's going to curve up again. Now we're going to chop a line straight through the center of our oval going up. And then for our eyebrow line, we're going to drop a line, run through the center of this line on a downward angle like this. And I'm going to bring that around the front of our circle. And you're going to do that in a curved fashion like this. So this gives you the sort of building blocks of your different shapes here. Uh, from there, you can drop a line straight down to meet your chin line there. And we're going to drop in a little shape for the ear. That's going to uh, start in this back uh, quarter of our oval here. So just coming up, back, out, and down like this. So just a, just a rough ear shape. I wouldn't stress about that too much at this stage. Okay, from here, what we're going to do is drop in the eyebrows uh, and that eyebrow ridge section. So I'm going to come from the center line and I'm going to drop back quite a bit. There's going to be quite a gap here. I'm going to drop a diagonal line down in this direction, cutting past our center line there. And then I'm going to swoop that up and back like this. Okay. And that's going to give us the eyebrow for the uh, left hand side there. And uh, that looks a little bit too angular to me. So there is a little bit of experimentation here on getting these angles. Uh, right, might just drop that back a little bit like this. So it's a little bit smoother, right? Uh, just in front of this, I like to add in these little, uh, just little folds, so uh, like wrinkles in the skin area there. To draw in this top section of the nose, uh, we're gonna come down on a similar angle to this uh, to create a bit of a ridge where our eyebrow is, like that. And then we can sweep out for the tip of the nose and pretty much just cut that back in like that. Now I like to just line up the bottom of the nose like this and add in this little curve or flick for the nostril back there. For the other side eyebrow, we're gonna drop down to a similar level to this uh, over here and then come straight up like that. 
and then you can just double up on your line there to create that eyebrow. Now don't worry about the tops of the eyebrows, they're going to be obscured. Now from here we can start looking at dropping in our actual eye shapes. So what I like to do is come to about this line here on the eyebrow and cut back and these lines are going to be quite thick and then drop down and forward slightly for the back of the eye there and then you can do almost like a ghost line that comes around and back up a thicker line at the top again and then this line's going to be solid at the bottom but there's going to be a little gap here and here uh, from there we can just drop in a pupil shape so I'll take my circles and first I'll drop an iris in like this and then you can go ahead and take a smaller circle shape whatever you think is appropriate for the size of your iris there and drop a pupil in the center of it like that and that's going to give you your first eye there uh, if you'd like to you can add in just a couple of additional little lines uh, a lot of the time you'll see anime drawn with these little thin uh, sort of texture lines or expression lines so you can go ahead and feel free to put those in as well to draw in the other side i'm going to pretty much repeat what i just did i'm going to come out with my top line like this bring that other line directly down like that and then come around with my ghost line to sort of link it up and then you can strengthen up the bottom of that line and this will all come together a little bit nicer once you start to ink your design. All right, really simple way to drop in our mouth. I like to start on the inside of the pupils and just drop a line down. Same for the other side, like this. That's gonna give you, you know, a pretty good rough placement for our mouth here. Um, his mouth is gonna be slightly off to the side for this one. It's gonna start closer to the nose and end closer, a little bit closer to the chin or the area or the jawline area. So just starting it off there, bringing it down a little bit, cutting out, and then bringing from the top another line that comes around and just swoops back up to meet it. And this is gonna give us that sort of half open mouth area to where you can just add in a little zigzag with a straight line like that for the teeth. These designs tend to be nice and simple. Bring this line back and curve it up into the ear like that. And then I'll turn my page just to have a slightly better angle. I'm going to start to sort of taper that off into a point a little bit where the chin is. It's going to come in slightly where the mouth is and then back out for the cheek like that. Okay, looking at drawing our ear, I'm going to follow the outside shape around like this. And for the inside portion of the ear, the bottom is just going to swoop down, cut back up into this sort of curved triangular shape and that's gonna curve back around like that. And then just above this, we can bring a line up and around. And from the inside of that line, another line that falls down like that. And that is basically how to draw the ear section there. Now, another quick thing to mention is to draw a diagonal line from the outside of your iris there, like this. And on the other side as well. That's gonna give you a rough placement for the sort of whiskers that are drawn on Naruto's face. So then you can just draw in three sort of evenly spaced curved lines that are going to give you his whiskers. All right, moving along here, we've got to draw in the headband. So I like to just sweep across the top of the eyebrow line there to the top of our ear or the sort of under part of the ear there with this line. It's going to give us a headband and you want to make it nice and thick. So just coming across again, doubling up our line so that there's some width to it. And on the front end, end here or edge here, I'm just gonna add in these little triangular sort of shapes that are gonna give it a rough texture. It makes it look like it's uh, sort of bunched up and folded. And you can do the same thing at the back area here, but I'll just uh, sort of rough it out for now. Cause we're gonna add some hair in shortly. Uh, from here, you wanna add in that plate that's on the front uh, of the headband here. I just rough in a nice curved sort of rectangle shape across the front there. Like this. And you can add three little circles on either end of it to create the sort of little bolts that are holding it 
uh, onto the headband. Now these don't have to be perfect, so you can sort of rough those in. Uh, to create the symbol that's on the forehead there or on the headband there, I like to take a circle tool and just drop in a light circle to begin with, like this. I'll add a line coming off on the diagonal like this. Follow my circle around. And as I get to, you know, nearly closing it, I'll start to curl on the inside to create that classic spiral that comes around like this. And then on the right side, I'll follow a line down from the curve and underneath I'll follow a line forward from the curve to create the little uh, triangular section of that. All right, we're nearly there for the sketch. So start by drawing in the sort of sideburn hair here. Pretty much just these large triangular shapes like that uh, that come out in front of our ear. We're gonna do a little bit behind the ear as well. Like this. And then from there you can add in the little sort of tied off area of our headband just by adding in this little swooping line like this and that's going to give you that little area uh, that's tied off of our headband there to do the hair that's coming over the front of the headband again you're just doing these sort of large triangular shapes and i like to do a large one and a small one and the same thing for the other side It'll be a large one and a small one and now we can start to fill out the rest of the hair. So your hair is gonna come out from the top of the head. It's not gonna be glued to this line whatsoever. So I like to come out from on top of the headband with this first one. Start by adding in these additional little spikes like this. And I want it to look smaller at the back, get a little bit bigger towards the front area. So start off with these sort of smaller uh, areas. And then you can add in the larger sort of curves Alternating between large curves and small curves, I find works well, like this. And just like that, you've done his hair. Uh, you can go ahead and add in some additional uh, sort of hair spikes or hair flicks if you'd like through there, just to texture it out a little bit. Now from here, we're just gonna add in his collar. So I'm gonna start by bringing a line it comes from around here. It's gonna cut over the front of his face a little bit because he's actually gonna be looking back over his shoulder. And that will just come down to the front where I'm gonna drop in a little curve like this. And we can follow that shape back around. Like this, just following that curve that I've done in the middle there. Now for the center portion, I'll be splitting that into three sections. It can be one, a small section in the middle and then a larger section for the end part there for that middle section you can just add little lines horizontal lines running across it because that's actually the top of the sort of zipper portion of his jacket there and then we can bring a line up and around the back of the head like this and this is sort of the uh, more difficult of the two because you've got to take into consideration the way that it folds around so it's gonna get slimmer here and we're gonna see the inside of it more, like that. But that'll just take a little bit of practice to get used to uh, drawing in lines like that, you know. Uh, then you can just drop a little bit of a shoulder off like this. To complete this collar section, uh, I'm basically going to add in these horizontal, or sorry, vertical lines along the collar that create the ridges uh, on the collar there. So just cleaning up my lines a little bit and I'm gonna add in these horizontal lines, sort of following the shape of it, the curve around at the top. And there's gonna be a little line just underneath the chin to indicate where his neck is. So that is our basic sort of uh, Naruto character. And before I transfer this to watercolor paper for painting, the last thing we're gonna do is add some flames around it. This is gonna help sort of frame off the design so that if you were to tattoo this on a calf or maybe as a half sleeve, something like that, uh, you'd have something framing the bottom off. It doesn't just disappear into nothing. Uh, these are gonna be like Japanese style flames and they're gonna cut off the bottom of our collar a little bit too. So just starting out close to center, I'll add in a long sort of S curve and I'll bring that back and I'll leave a little gap there and then continue on. Just always getting wider towards our base. Off that little gap, you can always curve off with an additional 
sort of lick of uh, fire there. So this is how you're going to get your flame shapes in, is you're pretty much drawing these long S curves and then, you know, leaving little breaks in them so that you can come off with another uh, sort of lick of fire there. So I'm also going to show you how to do these recurve areas because they look really sweet as well. Uh, so I'll bring a line that comes around from here. And as it approaches the next curve, it'll curve back like that. That's going to create our recurve. Uh, from the line underneath it, I'll just bring up like this. we're going to then recurve around that line. And in this case, I want to bring it up behind our collar there. So coming back out and around and behind our collar. And again, behind our collar there. Uh, now, of course you can split this off again. So I'll just create a little gap. Once I've erased the collar there or the shoulder, I'll uh, create a little gap and I might bring in another little recurve into a flame. And another one like this. So you can go ahead and add in all these little sections and of course create gaps wherever you find them necessary and you can go ahead and add in additional flames like this. So I'm going to use this same technique on both sides of the design to create almost like a frame and then we'll start painting this one. Okay, so our Naruto illustration is complete and ready to be transferred to some watercolor paper so that we can start painting this one. Now, I'm going to recommend a couple of things. First up, I'd recommend using a brush marker. This is a Tombow Fudenosuke pen. This thing is fantastic for getting all sorts of line variants. And when you're doing anime uh, style designs, I think line variants looks really dynamic and looks great for that. But I've also got one of my regular Stadler pigment liners in a 1.2. Uh, for doing my flames and a couple of other areas where I'd like to be a little bit more controlled. The other thing I'd recommend is that you use hot pressed watercolor paper instead of the usual cold press that we use here on my channel. And that is just to get a smoother line consistency, especially if you're doing uh, an anime style design where the lines are really smooth and neat. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this guy to some watercolor paper right now. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Now, while I'm transferring that to some watercolor paper, I will quickly let you guys know that the Honey Mask Handbook is an illustration book that essentially teaches you guys how to draw a traditional style Japanese honey mask from start to finish. It contains all of the steps you need to complete a honey mask illustration. And this book is available at the link in the description and it's 100% free. So if you haven't got this yet, now's your chance. Go ahead and click the link in the description. You've got nothing to lose. Okay, I've gone ahead and transferred our Naruto drawing over to some watercolor paper. Like I said, this is hot press paper and we're gonna go ahead and start painting it. So just to explain my paint setup here, uh, we're using mostly gray wash for this one with a couple of little pops of color. So I've got solid carbon black. I've got a medium gray wash and a light gray wash. And I made these just by mixing various levels of black with a few drops of water uh, to help dilute them. And as usual, we are starting off with a little bit of uh, black shading here. So we're going to start with our gray wash and I'm going to go in first with a medium um, Actually in this case, I'm going to go in with the lightest gray wash and start off with the hair now Naruto has blonde hair So in this case, I want to just do his hair a flat light gray color Now one thing to keep in mind when you're working with hot press watercolor paper is that it will it won't soak up your ink as quickly, so you'll need to wait a little bit longer in terms of drying time. Uh, generally with cold pressed watercolor paper, the ink will dry a lot quicker and you'll be able to move a lot quicker through your layers. Uh, so when you're working with the hot pressed paper, just keep that in mind. You're going to want to give the uh, paper ample time to dry. So I'm going to go through and just fill in the hair with this light gray color. Now don't freak out at this point, we've uh, got some sort of... Uh, streak marks in there from our doing our light gray but those are going to be disguised in a little bit because we're going to go in and add some other tones to it so i'm now going to go into my great uh, medium gray wash and i'm going to go ahead and start adding some uh, fill in shadows to our facial areas here so uh, underneath the headband here is going to be a pretty heavy uh, dark sort of shadow 
so you can pretty much come straight across uh, your design using your dark gray there and getting a nice shadow uh, just directly underneath that headband uh, to come into this these creases inside the uh, eye area here now you'll notice this is really different to a lot of the stuff that I uh, normally paint uh, but I think it's going to be a fun uh, little experiment to see what you guys think of this one and also just to you know do something a little bit different you know arts about being creative and exploring different styles and having a little bit of fun so just for something different I thought we'd come in and paint uh, you know an anime style character uh, coming in underneath the nose now for a little bit of shading and here is where you want to be quite careful with your shading just to get the shape right I'll come around the back of the nostril I'll dip down slightly and then back up into the nose and that's going to give us that little shaded portion underneath the nose uh, as you can see we are doing more of a cell shaded approach so this is the uh, style of shading that's typically used with these uh, anime characters like I said it's called uh, cell shading you're sort of shading things cell by cell uh, and shading block areas in very similar to if you were creating uh, vector graphic illustration there'll be like a little triangular portion close to the bottom of the uh, mouth here it's going to create like a little lip shadow just underneath the uh, bottom lip there like this and we're going to come around and add some shadows uh, to the outside portion of the face that's being covered by our collar there so just adding in some shadows following the shape of your collar and you need these to be relatively accurate in shape because we're not going to be doing a lot of smooth blending uh, there'll be a shadow across the bottom of the chin but i kind of want to leave a very thin line along the bottom there of paper that's going to separate the shading from our line a little bit and i'll do the same thing up the back of the jawline and this is where a little bit more of that tattoo style uh, illustration kicks in okay coming into our ear a little bit and i'll go around uh, probably shading directly onto the ear like this to create a little bit of a little bit more shadowing towards the back of the face this inside portion of the ear i'll do solid uh, gray wash there uh, maybe the same can be done for this section but again i'm going to leave a little gap just to help separate things a little bit like that and the inside there as well at the top now the areas of skin on the inside here are just going to be solid gray wash uh, in the medium or darker gray wash tone because they're pretty much completely obscured by shadow so I like to do those a little bit darker uh, so going in with my darker gray wash now I'm going to start working uh, some of the outside portions of the hair and adding a bit of a shadow to them uh, making the hair look a little bit more realistic and it just adds that classic sort of anime look uh, where you've got these sort of shaded areas uh, within your hair so along the bottoms of these spikes I can go ahead and just add in a shadow like this and uh, sometimes when you're working with these brushes it can be a little bit tricky to get that fine point on your hair the same way that you would when working with alcohol markers uh, which seems to be the most popular way to do these anime style illustrations but uh, you know sort of sticking with the style that my channel normally works in I'll be using watercolor obviously so just coming in and adding all those little shadow lines in for my hair to sort of give the hair more shape and you can see that this starts to uh, distract away from some of the um, imperfections in our hair there in the light gray that we did so adding in these this secondary level of tones it's going to have a little bit more shape to our hair just help it look a little bit nicer now from here I'm going to go in with my medium uh, to light gray wash here and I'm just going to paint in some sections of our collar here sort of just creating a few shadows uh, in between the ridges and this is going to help give it a little bit more depth as well now because we're doing this sort of more cell shaded approach you do have to be really deliberate with your shading uh, you can't sort of just 
uh, shave things off and blend them out to white sort of thing. So you do need to be deliberate with where your shadows are going. Uh, this can make things quite tricky, but uh, just play around with it and see how you go. So I'm adding a little bit of grey wash to this section of the collar as well. I think this part is normally orange, so fairly light shade of grey wash here and just adding in like a base uh, shadow curve, base shadow to it like that. Okay, one last thing to do before we get onto black shading is to add a nice heavy shadow to our little steel plate on the head here. And I'm gonna do that from the uh, right hand side. I'm gonna bring that shadow across like this and then cut it back. It's gonna help sort of show the curvature of it. And uh, also give it that sort of glossy chromed look. Okay, from here going into solid carbon black and we're gonna do a bit of shading on the headband. Uh, again, we're not really spit shading this. We're not gonna be blending these areas out. We're gonna be doing sort of solid areas of color uh, or shading and then working lighter shadows around them. So in this case, I'm going to drop in some of these little triangle uh, lines that are gonna indicate folds in our headband here. Just using my solid black and then I can come in with gray wash afterwards and sort of bulk out some of those shadows. Uh, so I'll just start by bringing in some of these longer streaks that look, like I said, sort of like folds in our headband. And don't be too scared to go heavy with the black here as well because there's not a lot of dark solid black areas in this illustration. So you really want to make these areas pop and stand out. So I'm now going in with my darker gray wash and layering in some of those shadows. So pretty much just going around the areas of black that I've already done with my darkest gray wash here. And that will help sort of uh, take the contrast out of some of those areas because obviously we've got solid black against white and it's very contrasted. So I'm gonna come in with my darkest shadow color here and just get rid of a bit of that contrast. Now there are gonna be a couple of parts that we're gonna do with a blended black. So the first one is gonna be in the eyes taking a little bit of uh, solid black and just coming around to the top edge of the eyes and I've added a little spot of a highlight in as well just using a, a pencil and then with my watercolor brush I'll gently blend that down and you really don't want to blend that down too far either just a very very soft blend uh, off that edge and I'll do the same thing for the edge that has the highlight on it. Just a little bit of black, just a touch. Moisten up my brush a little bit and then blend that down. Again, just a very, very subtle blend. And you'll do that for both eyes. All right, now there is one more part that we're gonna smooth blend and that's the inside of the flame portions here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take solid uh, carbon black here and I'm basically gonna work on the areas in between the flames, like so, that are closest to my character there, and then take my blending brush and gently blend that black out and up onto my design. And this is gonna help uh, tie the flames in with the rest of your illustration there. So again, bringing in some black, uh, I'll come into this section just underneath it which is his shoulder area. I'll come in with solid black off of there. And then again, just work on blending that up and out. And this is going to really help sort of uh, push out uh, from the flames there, help separate things a little bit more and just give it a slightly more dynamic appearance. And also make this easier and uh, look a little bit more pleasant on the skin if you were to tattoo it. So if you're learning to draw this uh, potentially as a future tattoo design, that's really going to sort of help you. Uh, I'm just blending towards the base of the flames now to now help sort of uh, push back that black shading off of the flames. So now I've got sections that are in the flames and sections that are a bit lighter uh, at the base of the flames there. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these black shading. And the last thing to do is the color and we're nearly there.
All right, guys, I know it's been a long video, but we're almost there. We just got to do the last few colors here. I've got Pyro Red, Yellow Orange Azo, and Thalo Blue. So I'm going to start off with the Thalo Blue, and we're going to come into the eyes for that one. Now, one thing to mention here, we're only doing the slightest amount of solid blue uh, because it's quite a dark sort of color. So I'm going to come around uh, my black shading there, take a bit of water on my brush, and just blend that blue back to a white towards the bottom. And then I'll turn my page and come with a bit of blue from the other side. Again, working over my black shading and around my highlight there towards the bottom. And as I get to the bottom, just blending that blue to a white. This is gonna give us a really nice glow effect and a little highlight towards the bottom of the eye. So you're gonna go ahead and do that to both eyes. Now, once you've done that solid blue, you can see that it gives the eyes a real glowy sort of pop. And that helps bring out this black and gray style illustration. Uh, to put in our yellows and reds, I'm gonna start with red in the base of our flames. I'll start with this side for an example. So I will take red, just solid red like this. And I will come out with solid red towards the ends of our flames. Some of them are gonna be just solid red like this. And as I get to about halfway, I'll use my blending brush to start working that red out to a pink. Up our flames. And eventually to a white. And you're pretty much gonna follow that method throughout your flames. So I'll come into these bottom ones here. Once I get to about the halfway mark, I'll take my blending brush, blend that out, and you want it to get to a pink and then to a white, so blending that out quite quickly. Now once that's been blended out, what you can do is take your yellow orange azo and come back from the tips of your flames, like this, or the ends of your flames. And as you go over the top of your red there, it'll look more and more orange as it starts to blend in with the red and you'll get this nice transition from yellow through orange through red for your flames there and that's going to look really sweet so I'm going to go ahead and do that for both sides all right everyone I really hope you enjoyed today's video uh, I do hope you give this one a try. It was something different and it was quite fun to do actually. I think the results speak for themselves. Uh, it looks pretty wicked. I think it would make an excellent tattoo design or just an excellent illustration uh, if you're an anime fan. All right, that having been said guys, I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button and hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.